Hello guys and welcome back to the 13th tutorial of the Kotlin UP2 Pro series. In the last video I talked about while loops, so we created an array here with uh, strings in it and we defined a counter variable i here to print every single item of that array. So i starts at 0, so we first print the item at index 0, then we increase i by 1 and in the next round of the loop we will print guys and in the last round we will print what's up. In this video I will show you the for loop which is another kind of loop and with the for loop we can do stuff like that in a much more efficient and shorter way. So let's start again by deleting all of that code from the previous video. So in for loops we need to have a collection basically of elements so for example an array where we have several elements in it and then we define a variable that starts at the first element and goes through the whole collection until it is at the last element and in every iteration and every round of the loop we can access the current element. So let's start by creating an array here, my array again and I set that to array of and just put one two three in it. So now we actually want to create the for loop by typing the keyword for followed by parentheses here and in every for loop we start by creating a variable that will contain the current element. So in our example here it will contain the 1 in the first iteration, it will contain the 2 in the second iteration and the 3 in the last iteration. So I call the variable i again because that is the naming convention for a counter variable and after that we write in, so for i in my array and followed by curly brackets here and inside of that we can simply print i now. So what this does is it will go through the whole array, my array, so through all of the numbers and in the first round i will be 1, in the second round it will be 2 and in the third round it will be 3. So in the first round it will print i which is 1, in the second round it will be 2 and in the third round it will be 3. So let's run this right now. And as you can see it works. But we can actually use a much simpler way to accomplish exactly that. So I will remove that array, we don't need it anymore. So we don't have to define an on array here to do that. So instead of the array here I will create what is called a range. So I remove that and redefine a range by typing the first number, so the number where the range starts, which is 1 here followed by two dots and then the number which is the, the last number of the range in our example 3 and now we can simply run this again and as you can see it works like it did before with the array so it will just go through all of the numbers from 1 to 3 and print each number. So we can put any number here, we could also write 10 here and 5 there and run the program and it will print all the numbers from 5 to 10 here. So that is a really simple way to iterate over a range of numbers. And we can do much more awesome stuff with ranges. So let's remove that range and let's say we want to go from 10 to 5 actually. So we want to decrease i by 1 in every iteration. We can do that by typing 10 and then down to 5. So i starts at 10 now and goes down to 5. So if you run it, you see now it's actually in reverse order. So we count from 10 down to 5 here. And actually you can also modify by which step i will increase or decrease in every iteration. We can do that by typing step, for example, 2 after that. So if we run this, you see now it prints 10 and then it decreases by 2 because we wrote step 2. And after that it decreases by 2 again. And it won't print the 5 here because 
The next step would be from 6 to 4, and 4 is not in the range anymore. So it will only print those three numbers here. Another cool thing we can do with for loops and ranges is we can, for example, print the whole alphabet. So I remove that whole range here and simply write in single apostrophes here A, then the double dot, and then Z. So I will now go through the, the letter A through all of the letters between A and Z. So let's run this. And as you can see, it prints the whole alphabet here, which is really cool. So finally, I want to show you a little practical example of for loops. So I remove that loop and create an array again, my array, array of, and put some random numbers in, it, in there. So you put any numbers in there, it doesn't matter. Okay. And now I want to create a loop that goes through the whole array and actually returns or saves in a variable the, the maximum number of that array. So in our case, the, the value of 10 would be in our variable max here. And I initialize max by setting it to my array at the index of 0. So it will just be 4 here because the first at index zero. But of course that's not the maximum value of the array. So to actually do that we create a for loop here and go through the whole array again. So for i in my array, actually you don't have to, to call this i, you can also call it item or whatever. So just to show you I call it item now. And so we so we go through the whole array now and for every item for the 4, for the 5, for the 8, and so on, we want to check if that item is larger than the value saved in max. So if it is, then we found the new maximum. So we create an if statement here and check if item is larger than um, max. So in that case, we found the new maximum, which is item. So we can set the value of max to the just found item and that's basically it. So if we print max after that and run the program, as you can see it prints 10 here. So when we take a look at the array, 10 is also the maximum value of the array. So our loop works just fine. So this loop will go through the whole array and check for each item if it is larger than the maximum. So maximum starts at 4 because we set it to my array at index 0 which is 4. So the item will also be 4 in the beginning so it will compare if 4 is larger than 4 which it isn't. Then it will continue and set item to 5 which is the next element. It will compare if 5 is larger than max and max is currently 4, so 5 is larger than uh, 4, so we set the new maximum to item. So the new maximum is 5 here. And we, we just go on like that and compare for every value if it is bigger than the just saved maximum value. The easier version of the homework for this video is to create an array and put some numbers in it and then write a for loop that calculates the sum of that array. So in my case, the sum is 27 of all the elements in the array. In your case, it should return, of course, the sum of the numbers that you have in your array. The harder version of the homework is to let the user enter five numbers and then calculate the average value of those five numbers. So for example, I type two, four, seven, 10, and one, and then it tells me the average value is 4.8. Also keep in mind, because you have to accept user input here, that you have to check if that input is not equal to null before you mess around with it, otherwise it won't work. Finally, I want to explain the solution of the easier homework of the last video. So the task was to let the user enter a number and then count from that number down to zero using a while loop. So 
In that line, we save the, the user input in the variable x and then simply print a line that we now want to count down from x to zero. You actually don't need that print line statement. It's just for notifying the user. And then use a while loop. We make sure that this is only executed if x is not equal to null because the read line function can return null if something goes wrong. And we execute that while loop as long as x is larger or equal than zero. And then we simply print x and decrease x by one. So in the harder version of the homework of the last video, you, sh you should um, let the user enter two values, x and y here, and calculate x to the power of y. So for that, I created an, an additional variable result and set that initially to one. And I also created a counter variable i and set it to zero. In the while loop, we first have to check if x and y are not equal to null, otherwise we don't want to execute that while loop. And then we check um, if i is less than y, so we want to execute that while loop exactly y times. And in each iteration, we multiply our result by x. So if you, for example, have four to the power of three, then that means that we multiply our result with x, x is four here. So result is initially one. So we multiply result by four. Then in the next iteration, we multiply it by four again. And finally, in the next iteration, we multiply it by four again. And by doing that, we multiplied the four three times with its own. So that's exactly what we have to do here. And after that, we can simply print that x to the power of y is whatever is in the variable result. So that's it for this video. I hope you like it. If you found a solution for this video's homework, then don't mind posting it in the comments. And I can comment on that solution if that is correct and if you can improve something on that. And yeah. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.